Because across the state, they're in crisis mode as they make cuts to programs and work to serve students remotely because of this pandemic. Bellevue College is one of those schools. And joining us live this morning, morning is former Washington Governor Gary Locke. He was just named interim president of Bellevue College. Good morning, Mr. Locke. So glad to have you here with us. Good morning, Omar. Yeah, uh, before we talk about those impacts of COVID-19 uh, on higher education, of course, we want to get your reaction to everything going on across the city, uh, especially with the protests last night. What are your thoughts on that? Well, obviously, uh, this is a very tragic situation uh, throughout uh, Minneapolis, uh, but really the whole uh, issue of, uh, uh, of uh, discrimination and targeting of African-Americans, especially males, uh, and the... Uh, uh, tragic death at the hands of the police. I mean, uh, the the motions are real and raw. Uh, a lot of pent up anger and frustration over years and years and years of uh, being targeted and treated so unfairly by police uh, uh, throughout African American communities. And so, uh, the outrage is justified. I mean, when you look at the video, you're just absolutely horrified. I mean, the man is handcuffed. He's down. Why is the police officer? Uh, kneeling onto his neck uh, when he says he can't breathe, uh, needs to stand up. Um, it's really just uh, shocking. And uh, what do we tell our kids? Uh, how do how do we how can how do we explain this uh, to to our children? Uh, so obviously, uh, justice needs to be um, uh, brought. Uh, officers need to be prosecuted. Uh, absolutely unacceptable, and it's a disgrace. Uh, not. Uh, it's also a disgrace to fellow police officers who are trying to do the right thing. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, emotions are raw and people are wanting to protest. It was sad what happened in Seattle. I think there were really two groups uh, converging in, in downtown Seattle uh, yesterday and last night. You have the peaceful protests uh, led by people and coming from across the state who care about uh, this issue, who want uh, to make a statement about ending police brutality. Uh, that black lives do matter, all lives matter, black lives do matter. And then you had people who were just uh, intent, really uh, using the occasion to uh, uh, engage in anarchy, anarchy and violence and really de detracted uh, from the message uh, of stopping police brutality. And that's most unfortunate. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that perspective. And we want to talk about your new role here, switching gears just a little bit. Uh, you're coming to Bellevue College at a very interesting time, of course. How are you planning to leverage your past experience, of course, in state and federal government to tackle some of those financial challenges spurred by this pandemic going on at uh, Bellevue College? Well, first of all, there are three critical issues and priorities facing the college. Number one, we need to bring healing back to the campus, working with the students, the faculty and the staff and the community. We need to bring people together and really demonstrate that the college is committed to diversity, to respecting all uh, political and cultural viewpoints. I mean, that diversity of, of the faculty and the staff is really the strength of Bellevue College. In fact, that diversity of people, cultures, uh, languages, customs, perspective is the strength of America, and we need to embrace that. Uh, the defacement, uh, censoring, alteration of an art installation that, uh, 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 that, uh, that, that is put on uh, to uh, uh, remind people of the incarceration of Japanese Americans during uh, World War II, that has really created a, that defacement, censoring, alteration of that art installation has really created a lot of raw emotions and angst on the campus and had led to the replacement of the president and the vice president. So number one, we need to bring healing to the campus and show that everyone is respectful of each other, open to different viewpoints, and very focused and embracing of diversity. Uh, and uh, the second thing, of course, is how do we conduct and provide high quality, excellent, enriching education in this era of COVID-19 where everything is online? Uh, you can't teach welding, you can't teach brain surgery, you can't teach someone how to draw blood over the internet. Uh, but obviously the internet is necessary, uh, but how do we provide that in-person uh, enriching education, whether it's uh, a faculty student discussions, um, uh, advising, a counseling of students, that has to be done somehow in person or at least one-on-one -on -one over the internet. So we have our challenges cut out uh, for us. 
The second thing, of, the third thing, of course, is the financial crisis facing the entire state, where the state, uh, because of businesses are closed, they're not making money, they're not sending in tax payments uh, to the state capital, people are not buying things because uh, everyone's staying at home, and so there's no sales tax being collected, and all of that money goes into Olympia, which pays for education. Uh, right. Over half of the state's budget is just uh, devoted to paying for kindergarten through 12th grade. Then you have human services, people on, on welfare. You have the elderly, health care. Uh, you also have our, our uh, uh, prisons and uh, uh, parks and, and recreation that have to be funded. And with so that financial gap. We're looking at huge cuts, and we need to make sure that our colleges and universities are not suffering because at a time when unemployment is high, people, more people want to attend colleges and universities to get the training and the upgrading of the skills that they need in order to get a job or to keep a job as the economy changes. Absolutely. Gary Locke, thanks so much for joining us here on this Sunday morning. We appreciate your time. We'll check back in with you pretty soon here. All right. All right. Well, uh, you're watching Q13 News this morning on Joe TV. We're